All right, back for another beer review, and today I'll be reviewing yet another beer from the Monkish Brewing Company, and they're out of Torrance, California, and this is their Unfold the Scroll. So they're calling this one a triple dry hopped double IPA that comes in at 8.3% alcohol by volume. No IBUs list in time of review. This can is just over three weeks old. I'm gonna give a huge thanks and shout out once again to a very good friend of mine and viewer of the channel, Sierra Hotel, for this beer. So big thanks to him in the description box. I'll post a link to the beer mail unboxing video I did that contains all the goodies he hooked me up with. He hooked me up with 10 different beers, one monkish beer in that box, and this is said beer. So I was talking to Sierra Hotel about this one, and he said to him, this was one of, if not his favorite, uh, double IPA that Monkish re uh, released back in 2023. He said it's definitely in the top three for him. He may have said just beer period from Monkish, but definitely double IPA. And uh, yeah, I'm here for it. So uh, this one is, they say, saturated with citra hops. I don't know if there's any other hops, but definitely a lot of citra. So I'm gonna crack this one open. The only thing that you know worries me with Monkish is I've had a lot of their beers you know, under four or five months old, and a lot of times they have hop burn. Hopefully that's not the case with this one, but uh, I'm really excited about this one. So I, you know, I'm pouring it like a foot from my face almost, and uh, it smells fucking fantastic. So we're gonna do something like that. I wanna be able to get my nose in there. I'm not gonna cheat, just gonna wipe that down and put this over here like this. So that looks like a glass of like OJ, pineapple juice, something like that. Has that really deep, dark, honey orange color. How about a finger of an off-white soap suds he had that is now dissipated to a thin film? I notice a lot of monkish beers do that, uh, where they just, you know, there's no head. And you can kind of swirl a head back up to some degree here, like a very slight one, but not much. Hold up to light, yeah, you can't see through it. Murky, turbid, the whole nine, and it looks absolutely beautiful in the glass, aside from the head retention, which it was a little better, but whatever. Let's get a nose. Wow. What the fuck? There is so much crazy shit happening in the nose. I don't know where to begin. They say saturated with citra, right? To me, this is passion fruit. This is guava. Lemon lime, like big fruits that I'm not used to a lot of in, in most of like the hazy and New England double IPAs and hot four beers in general. Oh my god, yeah. Lemon, I'd say, I'd say in order, passion fruit, guava, lemon lime. And then there's an underlying, you know, orange, peach, the typical things I get from citra. There is a big dank quality to this one, too. Definitely has that like weed slash marijuana, but now that I'm thinking about it, it has more of like a shout out to Matt over at Massive Beers. He likes to use this one occasionally, but uh, the weeds that you pull, you know, like out in your garden, has like that, like, like a fresh, like garden kind of scent. Oh my God. I just can't get over how much passion fruit and guava I'm getting off of this. The fact that they're using only citra, I did not anticipate that at all. And that's what I'm getting. It smells so fucking good. There's also a little bit of vanilla. Now, here's the thing. With Monkish, it has to be the yeast. I, I always get, and I, maybe some folks perceive it as like bubble gum. I always perceive it as like, well, some people confectionate sugar, a little bit of like a vanilla note. And I feel it's coming from the yeast. But yeah, it's definitely giving me like, if passion fruit creamsicles existed or guava creamsicles. Pineapple. I just got pineapple. This is, this is... One of the most intense smelling double IPAs I've had in a long time. Like it is so like just, again, for lack of a better word, it's intense. It's like every time I go back, it just like in my nostrils, it's just exploding with this fruity, dank, uh, weedy kind of um, character that's just, it's fucking awesome. Yeah, I want to get into this one. Please be delicious, as delicious as the nose, but also no hopper. Anyway, cheers, everybody. Thanks again. It's the Sierra Hotel. Sierra, Sierra Hotel. I'm trying to say that all. It's Sierra Hotel. Just one word, Sierra Hotel. Cheers. Oh, yeah. Mm. You can tell this is super fresh. Not because there's a lot of hopper, but it's just fucking crazy fresh. Crazy fresh. Buying this as higher side and medium lower side of full, 
The last top four beer I reviewed, which you should see before this, is the Secular from Brujos. That was just an amazing body. This isn't quite on that level, but it's a decent, it's a, it's a, it's a good body. Higher side of uh, medium, lower side of full. 8.3, that was 9.3, so maybe comparing apples to oranges, but the mouth, or the body is good. The mouthfeel, this is where it loses me a little bit with Monkish. In general, like I would say Monkish's mouthfeels maybe aren't as, at least for me, top tier is a lot of like hyped East Coast um, breweries, like the Fidens of the Worlds, the Tree Houses, the other halves. I like their mouthfeels better, but Monkish, and this is this is what um, Sierra Hotel would say, I mean, we, we talk a lot offline, he said that, he doesn't think their bodies and mouthfeels are as good as a lot of like the hyped East Coast uh, breweries, but uh, he thinks they the hop saturation is better. And I wouldn't disagree with that. Certainly with this beer, because what it lacks in body and mouthfeel makes up for the intensity of the taste. But yeah, the mouthfeel, it, it is, you know, it has a decent smooth creamy kind of sensation but this is like moderately carbonated and i don't think i want that out of like your know, your new school hazy and new england ipas i want that soft smooth kind of creaminess right so the body's really good mouth feels a bit, bit lacking but the taste is pretty phenomenal it's like to me like concentrated passion fruit guava pineapple maybe lychee you know what? You know, I listen, I, a lot of people get certain things with Citra. I've always gotten two specific fruit characters from Citra, beers with Citra. Orange or tangerine, somewhere in that realm of citrus. And then peach. Some, some other stone fruits at times, like mango, apricot, but usually peach for me. I'm not really getting either of those at the forefront of this beer. All right, let's try to break down the taste. There's a little bit of like a biscuity vanilla thing going on. I think that is obviously the malt combining with the hot or the um, yeast. That's underneath the palate. It's kind of omnipresent. Um, but the front of the palate, like I'm just, I, I get like a hint of like an orange, maybe a little bit of like a white grapefruit, some more bitter and grapefruit. But after that, just waves of passion fruit, guava, pineapple, lychee, big tropical um, fruits are just hitting me and just like, it's just destroying my tongue with those flavors. It's kind of wild. What I will say too, and I'll get to it at the end, but there is not much hot burn here almost at all. And this is just over three weeks old. So I'm happy about that. So that combined with a little bit of vanilla, I'm getting a little bit of creamsicle vibes. The back of the palate, it's very floral, dank, herbaceous, and a little bit spicy. There, there is running the gamut of like all those different hop characters you get, but it's mostly dank. It's dank, a little bit of herbaceousness. Again, it's it's weeds, like weeds in your garden, but also a little bit of the marijuana. It, it, it's pretty much everything. Finishes a semi to full on dry with a mild to moderate bitterness. You know, when people talk about what the difference, you know, is between like West Coast hazy slash New England IPAs and East Coast, I think my general rule of thumb is I feel like on the East Coast, they have, you know, they have, they, they started the style, they invented the style, and then it started to kind of progress. The West Coast folks got hold of it and changed it into something slightly different. I think they produce a bit more of like a bitterness and dryness from West Coast perspective. But like Sierra Hotel said, I don't think the bodies and mouthfeels are as good. Now, that doesn't mean like certain breweries can't do that because certain breweries can do it all. I mean, I just reviewed a brew host beer. They're from Portland, Oregon. They're on the West Coast or Pacific Northwest, wherever you want to say. They're on the West Coast. And that body and mouthfeel is spectacular, right? It's not saying in Monkish. I've had Monkish body and mouthfeels are fantastic. I'm just saying as an average, I think that's where it kind of lands for me. Whatever. I don't know. I don't know. I'm comparing East Coast, West Coast, whatever. At the end of the day, the hop saturation in this one and just the intensity of the flavors on the palate are superb. It loses a little bit, you know, with the mouthfeel lacking to some degree, the body not being, you know, outstanding. But I do like the finish of this one because it's mild to moderately bitter and it's semi to full on dry and it doesn't get too sweet at any point. 8.3%, a little warming in the chest and in the stomach. It's fine. I mean, this can is empty. I've been drinking on this quite a bit and it's fucking really good. To me, this is not as good as the Brujos uh, Secular I had, but it's not that far off. I, I would say the negatives of this one, head retention, doesn't matter, not really. Um, but the mouth feels a little bit lacking, and I'm starting to get a little bit of hot burn on the back. I, I will say this, though. Keep that. Keep this in mind. I am more sensitive to hot burn 
than the normal person, I think. I think somebody who likes the hot burn or maybe isn't as sensitive, you probably wouldn't even detect it all that much. Getting a little bit. I, I mean, I've drank almost, had, what, what, like six, seven ounces, six, seven ounces of this one. It's fucking me up as I'm starting to slur my speech. But on top of that, I think that by the end of this glass, I'll probably be one and done. But it's 8.3% of a double IPA. I'm going to be one and done anyway. But this is really good. Um, another monkish winner. And they fucking make great. You know, new school, hazy, double IPAs, New England, double IPAs, whatever you want to call them. This one, triple dry hop. And it's just really good. So unfold the scroll. Scroll. Unfold the scroll. It's starting to definitely 100% hit me. I just burped, so get a little more carbonated than the style would dictate. But anyway, unfold the scroll from Monkish. I'm going to give this a high 4.5 out of 5 and go 4.6. This is really delicious. This would definitely be up there with the secular from Brujos that I just reviewed a couple days ago, if not for that mouthfeel. I think that is uh, the, the, you know, the main difference. Um, I think the hop saturation in this one is better, but the Brujos had that body and mouthfeel you know, just locked down and it was still a delicious beer. So huge thanks Sierra Hotel for all of these beers. And again, the labels on Monkish, they're always really nice. Anyway, uh, price point availability. I don't know for sure, but I'd guess this is probably $24 to $26 a four-pack. I think that's kind of the realm uh, for these triple dry hop double um, IPAs from Monkish. And then availability is Monkish. You got to go to uh, their website. I think they deliver throughout uh, the state of California. And then I also think you can buy their stuff at the couple locations they have. You might see some drips and drabs uh, across like the West Coast and in random spots, but for the most part, you got to know somebody or you got to live in California. Outside of that, kind of difficult to get. So yeah, I can't thank Sierra Hotel enough for all the beers he sent my way, but I'm, I'm glad he included another Monkish because, man, they make some fucking delicious beers. So if you've had this one before, because I think they've released this one numerous times before, uh, post the comment section. Let me know what you think uh, about this one. Um, I don't know where I'd place this as far as monkish beers that I've had over the past year. It'd definitely be in the top three to four. Um, I think that Adu Adu was right up there with this one, both Citra beers. I think that was a triple IPA. And then Conscious Be Free was probably my favorite within the past year. And I think that's a little bit better than this. But who am I? I'm just some random dude on YouTube just spewing bullshit into a camera. So anyway, appreciate everybody stopping by for another beer review here on the Beer Patrol. I already said 8.3%. You really can't taste it. And I'm going to go drink the rest of this and hopefully by the end not have any hot burn. I don't think it's going to be an issue because I feel like I'd be feeling a little bit more right now as we speak and I'm not. So anyway, till the next one. Cheers.